This is uh, a brief tutorial on how to set up a heck learning chapter, how to um, fill in each section because sometimes that can be difficult. So uh, we're just going to go through a hack and, and this is a chapter from Hacking Education, 10 Quick Fixes for Every School, the first hack learning book. So here you see the hack title is Pineapple Charts. It's a thing and yours may not always be a thing. It may be an action. And then we sort of describe it with a subtitle, Boost Teacher Collaboration with a Public Chart of Open Door Lessons. We always add a relevant quote. And then we begin with the problem. Here's a place where you might be able to add a little anecdote, um, you know, a narrative, sort of have a little fun with it. Uh, teachers are constantly searching for new ideas because the, the problem is they have little to no peer observation. Uh, and then, you know, we add in what, what someone might say or what teachers say. And then we're trying to explain the problem. The idea of observing other teachers is nothing new. It's the way we all first started learning, but we're just not doing enough of it. And, and we continue to build that out here. Now we get to the hack, and the hack is that unique solution. So we build off of pineapple charts, and we say post a calendar of open house lessons. Pay careful attention here to how this hack is explained in a way that um, we try to make anyone understand. So someone said, well, what is a pineapple chart? Uh, why, why is it called a pineapple chart? So we talk about that. We talk about the pineapple as a symbol of welcome. We say it's a systematic way to put a welcome mat out for all classrooms, a central message board that lets other teachers know that you are doing something worth watching today. And if they'd like to come by, your door is open. So that's really it. That's what a pineapple chart is. We're going to create this chart that says, I'm doing this at this time, and you can come in. And we elaborate on that, and then we add this really nice picture of what it might look like, hopefully helping educators understand here's a week, and then these are class periods, and on Monday, on second period, and here someone named Hughes is doing Socratic circles. And on Thursday, second period, Silva is doing video editing in iMovie. And on a different day down here, a sixth period, someone's doing Kahoot quiz. So you might look at this and say, hey, this looks cool. I'd like to learn Kahoot or I'd like to learn iMovie editings and I'm free this period so I'm going to go in. And that's what this is. Okay, and we talk more about that, you know, why it's good, It's uh, what's better um, is that this system is dynamic and customizable. It's the exact opposite of a one-size-fits-all PD. Each week teachers make their own decisions about what they need or are interested in. If they have a pack schedule for several weeks, they may not be um, doing any observing at all. But when the time is available, they can and so on. So then we get to this uh, all important what you can do tomorrow. And we like to dress these up in the paperback with a little graphic. So again, this is ask yourself, can this be done tomorrow? Is it a tangible thing that someone could say, yes, I can do it? Okay, a little introduction. A full-blown self-running pineapple chart will take some time to grow, but you can try a quick pilot version this way. Tomorrow, I want to try it. Post your pineapple chart. And we just say very simply, grab a sheet of notebook paper, poster, dry erase board, hang it in a location where teachers are likely to see it. Ask a key question across the top, right? What's going on in your class today? What time will it be happening? Recruit one or two teachers. Ask them to write it down. So you want to get people involved. I'm going to go to them and say, hey, will you try this? And that's what this says. Send the word using an all staff email or an all call on a PA system. Announce to the staff that this paper exists, that Ms. Blank is doing blank in her room today and all of that. So that's a, that's a quick what you can do tomorrow section. Then we get to blueprint. Now, sometimes these might be introduced with a little sentence or two as well. Sometimes not. So now we're building it out so it'll last. Uh, these are longer, but again, they're tangible. It has to be able to be done. Explain the overall process of the chart to staff. This might not be what you can do tomorrow. It might be later. Or you might do it that day, try it, and then say, Let, we're going to meet at the end of the day and we're going we're gonna to debrief a little bit. So maybe you could do that tomorrow, but you might say we're going to do it later. Um, create the chart. This might take some time. You might say we're going to build something out for long term. Recruit early adopters. Each day in a week, a principal might go up to someone and say, hey, I'd really like for you to participate in this because I think you're doing some cool stuff. And, you know, this is all explained. Privately recruit two groups. 
teachers who are not shy about having visitors in their room and are willing to add their names and activities to the chart when it's still a big blank space. And another group who will commit to making visits. You see how this might take some time to get these groups and to recruit these people, but it's a very simple connection back to what the pineapple chart is. So we're getting these people to participate in the hack. These, these uh, sections, what you can do tomorrow, um, the problem, what you can do tomorrow, blueprint, these all need to be connected. Overcoming pushback. The pushback should come from these prior sections. Uh, I'm too self-conscious to have people watch me teach. So if we're asking people to open up your door and welcome people in, someone, this could be a pushback. Well, I don't want to do that. I'm, I'm nervous. I don't like it. Someone else might say, I don't do anything interesting enough because we're saying in a pineapple chart, let's share with people what we're doing that's great. Okay, some people, and, and then we answer that. How do we deal with that pushback? This is where your early adopters come in. Make sure the first people who put their lessons up include some things that might be considered ordinary. Um, you know, and, and we list some of those here, little examples. Okay, so we want to put as much of that as we need. And then the hack in action, someone is doing this. This isn't more summary. We're not continuing with here's how you do it. We're, we're bringing in quotes. We're bringing in anecdotes. Sometimes the author has their own anecdote. Here, we actually go out and get someone. At Woburn Memorial High School in Woburn, Massachusetts, teachers began using the pineapple chart in the spring of 2015. Here's a quote. There was a ton of enthusiasm as soon as we shared the idea with staff, says Abby Morton, earth science teacher who introduced the chart. And not long after the chart was posted, teachers started visiting each other's classrooms. The things in the prior sections of the chapter are illustrated in this example. People say, I want to know someone has done this. And this is what you want to think about as you're building out your chapters in a hack learning book. I've got, I can do it tomorrow. Here's some steps that might take longer to build for capacity. And then who's done this that I could share in this hack in action? And then we just sum it up. And this is a pretty short summary. So there it is. That is a hack learning chapter right from the beginning, from main hack title, subtitle, relevant quote, problem, the, the hack, a graphic if you have one that works, uh, what you can do tomorrow, here's a blueprint, this overcoming pushback. Think when you're up here, what will people say is a problem? That's how you get to your pushback. And then again, that hack in action, someone actually did this. That is what a hack learning chapter looks like. So if you've got an idea, if you're going to write a book, keep this in mind as you work, and uh, you'll put together one fabulous hack learning series book. Thanks.